So it's over. That's the end of WandaVision, at least this season. And what did I think of it? Eh. <laughs> Star Wars. Hey guys, this is my review for the end of WandaVision, the last episode. This episode had Wanda and Agnes coming together fighting, it had vision on vision action, and it continued to show off the dumbest character that the Marvel Universe has ever created, the sword director, dumb dumb, my, my god. This guy went from a somewhat jaded character to a full-on stereotype cartoon. Every time this guy had to come on to set for this last episode. He must have just been like, man, can I just eat it? Can I just... I'm pulling off every single cliche in the book. He even shot at children. And then he's going to jail at the end. He turned into a full-on Scooby-Doo villain by the end of this. He's honestly the worst part about this whole thing. Every time he came on screen in this last episode, boggled it down. Which was funny because while he was continuing to just rip apart the scenery, it would go back to the vision on vision fight, which the physical fight was okay. You can definitely see the budgetary limits. It's interesting to see that. Um, it's still a very good VFX budget for a television show, but you could see it just a little bit. Vision's very smooth, like almost too smooth. There's not much texture to him. My favorite part of this whole episode and probably the entire series was the vision on vision conversation, the use of a paradox almost, in terms of having the white vision be kind of convinced of there being something behind the curtain for himself, being more arterial, arterial motives to what his purpose is, whereas the current vision, or Wanda's vision, fully understands that he is a fake concept, and he uses that knowledge to further influence and give knowledge to the White Vision, who then flies off into space and we'll see whatever happens to him. Overall, the whole kind of thing with Agnes, too. Essentially, Agnes was just a giant tool in terms of setting up what I've heard is the House of M. Forgive me, I haven't read the Marvel comics that much, but I've heard that the House of M is a very important event that happened in the Marvel Universe that's associated with Wanda and I feel that that's what they're building up to, which is cool because it's apparently a big world-altering moment. A lot of people are speculating that that's how they're going to bring the mutants in. However, they didn't explain one thing, which was Pietro. Like, apparently he was an actor, like this actor with a terrible name, but what, what else does that mean? They don't answer that. Like, how did he have the speed? What, what was that? Was that just some kind of very limp use tool for giving us some thoughts that it might be the Quicksilver from the Mutant Universe, but it's not. I am interested in seeing what happens with Rambo, considering she now has these powers and she is, there's a rumor that she might be a mutant now because of what Wanda's world did to her. Otherwise, I don't know, I, I just found that this last episode was just okay. I, I think it's not poorly put together. I did like how Wanda full-on accepts what she's done. I thought that when the civilians of the town were like, well, look what you've done to us, and she's still trying to give herself that false sense of, of purpose and security by saying you're all fine and in the end she's not she's full-on uh, acknowledging what she's done and then she lets everyone go at the end which by the way that's a I'll give dumb dumb cartoon doofus credit for one thing he isn't wrong when saying that that is technically illegal like he she pulled on a full-on hostage situation with this whole town and it looks like she's just getting off scot-free which yeah, I, I don't know how you can really uh, give Wanda any sort of pass on that. I, I couldn't. And I noticed that Rambo was like, I ain't touching this. And then there's the two little end credit scenes. One in particular being uh, Rambo getting the note from the, the what's it, the milkshake drinking alien, aliens that they want to talk to her up in space. Okay. And then the other one was that Wanda is reading the Book of the Damned. I don't know. I feel like... Everything in this was enough to give you guys some kind of interest in what's going to happen in the Marvel Universe later on, but they still had to make it vague enough that people who don't have Disney Plus will still be able to enjoy the movies as they are. So that's why everything that Agnes said about you don't know what you've done is so goddamn vague. 
It's a very overused story trope when you can't explain everything. Essentially, the X-Files movie, uh, Fight the Future, that whole movie is so vague. But it's done well, admittedly, but that was a movie that had to both establish uh, a film for people who had never seen the X-Files, but also still be reminiscent for people who had been watching the film. It had to tie into the television show, but not enough that it would be detrimental to people who were watching the show that they couldn't watch this that it wouldn't they wouldn't lose out on what was going on but it still have an, enough of an effect to still be somewhat important to the television show and that's exactly what WandaVision is. WandaVision is the television version of the X-Files movie. I'll give the show credit for one thing it got better with every episode. It started off real slow and really kind of lacking in any direction and it slowly built to something which was cool and it got really good and then I feel this last episode it, it doesn't falter entirely, it's just kind of eh. I, I just didn't think it had the oomph that everyone was expecting, and that's basically been my whole thing for this whole show. I've watched it, and I'm never, ever watching this again. Pretty much gonna cancel the Disney Plus after this. I stayed around for this. Yeah, sure, there's, there's a uh, Winter Soldier and Falcon, but you know what? I'll just find other ways to watch it. It wasn't as, my god, as I everyone kept on saying it was. It was just okay. But you know what? For its first outing, for Disney Marvel doing their first television show outing, not too bad. I like the idea of it. It just wasn't this big grandiose thing that they kept on making it be. Like, they're like, oh, you've never seen television like this before. Anyways, I'm gonna give the last episode of WandaVision a 4 out of 7. It had some good moments, it had some dumb moments, it had some incredibly vague and meh moments, and yeah, I guess for those of you who did enjoy this series, good on you, I'm happy that you did. For me, I just didn't think it was as great as everyone was saying it was, but it still was okay. Otherwise though, that's all for me guys, I hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.